Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back and thank you for joining me. Um, this is one of the last set of videos we're going to do in this series, the Web Programming Fundamental Series. Now, if you've been with me, if you started from the beginning, we've been through a number of videos. I don't know how many they are, 70 or something videos total, but whatever. We're coming down to the end. So, if you remember, in a previous section, we were talking about how to do our to-do application using ng full stack generator which by default uses the bootstrap library and so there we look at how we create task edit task and so on and that's just a recap of something we've done several times but then we look at how we can do it once we have ng full stack installed of course we did that by hand a couple chapters before and so this chapter now is chapter 11 and we're going to look at what if we wanted to use angular material ui for our web application instead and again just like the previous video where we have went through all that stuff before and i will show you is how you do things that are new which is how do you do your form um, in this new um, when we use the generator we've done forms before i've also done video where i show you what material ui look like where are you and so now it's going to say, well, okay, what if you wanted to use NG full stack to get started? How do you in convert that to using Angular Material UI? Does that make sense? By default, again, NG full stack UI uses Bootstrap. And now we're saying, well, okay, I want to use NG full stack for my, to generate my scaffold, app application scaffolding, but on structure, but I still want to use Angular Material UI instead of Bootstrap, which is the default. And so that's what we're going to cover today. And this is going to be the only section in this video because once you have Angular Material UI installed, you go back and you do the same thing we've been doing before, which is you create forms for listing, form for editing, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff still remains the same. The only difference is what your UI is going to look like. Okay. All right. So let's get started. So I'm going to save, put this away. And the only thing I've done so far is I've changed to this directory called um, chapter 11 to do web application with material UI. And then I created that data directory. And of course, I don't have anything else in here. So I'm going to go start up MongoDB in that directory. So MongoD minus DP path. And I'm going to say data, which is here. Uh, let's see. Database path, DB path. And so I'm going to have Mongo run in this new directory, it's a clean directory. I'm going to go um, get another tab going here, and um, I have my editor already, um, and so data. So now let's generate our application, right? So same thing, yo, ng, full stack, right? And, well, let me create a directory for my application, md, cd, um, let's call it web, you know, to-do app, to-do. And so now I'm going to write yo ng full stack because I'm pretending that oh, we don't have an application yet we don't we didn't go ask me the name of the application um, to do that's fine uh, my name doesn't matter email address doesn't matter really we put in full stack application here in the example we're doing we're doing full stack application because we do have a backend with MongoDB um, GitHub, all that stuff. NG1, we're not using NG2. Um, I'm going to say no here. We're using Node, Express, of course, and then which you want a server side Node, and is this going to be secure? Yes. And then do you want to keep testing different directories? Sure. Yes. And then do you want to use a different static web server? No. And then we're going to let that run. OK. And so let's just wait on that. Um, our directory should be getting populated here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit this. And I'm going to actually relaunch our editor in the so I'm gonna say LSCD. That's code directory. I'm going to say relaunch the editor in this directory. So. In a code directory instead. Uh, we can open this nice and big. And okay, so that's going. And let's wait for it to finish. Okay, so while that's going, let's take a look here. So I went to the Angular Material UI web page, 
And once you get there, um, one of the first things you want to do is click on getting started and then scroll along to the bottom and it shows you a simple, um, you know, uh, HTML page that you can actually use to get started. Okay. What do you need to include? And so, um, that's fine. You can start there. Or if you go down and you look at it, it says NPM, JSPM or Bower, and you click on that and it take you to the GitHub page and you scroll along and they tell you, okay, you can install with, if you want to use NPM, you can install using any one of these and then it tells you, well, okay, if, you know, if you, you install with NPM, it puts it in NPM, um, node underscore modules, mo node modules directory. If you install with Bower, it puts it in the Bower directory. So, so far, um, we use an ng full stack. So it has a Bower file for the front end, right? So this is Angular already. This is all the front end stuff. And for back end stuff, package.json, it uses NPM, of course, right? But it's keeping it separate. You don't have to, they're all G um, JavaScript um, modules. But we're gonna stay consistent with using Bower for our front end and so we're going to go and say we want to do Bower install and save. Um, now, this is the latest commit version to master, whatever. Um, why are we going to use save is because we want this to be updated in our file here as a dependency. Okay, so we're going to use this command. We copy this and I'm going to come over here. And before I get do anything else, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to... All right. So I already have this stuff under version control, so I'm not going to do a separate version control. Um, but let's do um, npm uh, run dev, as we know uh, we need to do. So that's going to run. And let's see, our application should come up here. And let's do try something. This is a task, for example. We do add, and so it adds a task, OK? And so you can, we know that's being saved to the back end. Okay, uh, that's good. Um, let's come back here. And I'm in the same directory. And I'm going to do paste and install that. And this is going to ask me. It says, oh, um, unable to find a suitable version for Angular. Please choose one by typing one of the numbers below. So it's saying that the one, this Angular 15x, which resolved to 1511 and is required by a to do application. And it says Angular 14, which resolved to 1 da 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 and is required by Angular material um, 1, you know, 3, and then messages, blah blah. ng animate, ng aria, these resolve to Angular, I guess, 1 6 and is required by these guys. So I know there's going to be a problem. So we're pretty much. Um, but so let's choose this last one. So this is a more updated version than the Angular that says one five x is the one that comes with um, with um, ng full stack. And if we choose one here, which is what is required by our to do application, there's going to be a little problem. So let me just show you the problem. Um, let's just choose one. And so it's going to install. And so now we know that all these things are installed in client dev. Bower Angular material. Okay. Um, so let's see client dev Bower Angular. So Angular, we have Angular material, Angular Aria, Aria, and so da da da. Now, when you go back here, it tells you if you use in Bower, the first thing you have to do is put a reference to the CSS file, right? So Let's do just that. Let's go to our index.html file and we'll put a reference to the CSS file. So it doesn't really matter where we kind of stick it in here. So um, I can stick it anywhere really. I'm going to put it right here. And it needs, um, as you can see, the way they reference stuff in Bower is by putting that to say current directory forward slash not really the root, um, Bower component and Angular material, Angular material at CS, that CSS. And we could see it though that is the right directory because if we go Bower components, 
angular dash material angular dash material at CSS okay and so that's there all right um, the other thing it tells us is that we need angular which we already have it tells you you need angular aria angular animate and then of course our angular material so we need these three things so let's do that and let's scroll down and let's stick it in just after where we have angular so no problem if we stick it in before a route or anything that's okay and I'm going to do that and I'm going to say this, 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 and I'm going to put a dot in front of it. And I'm going to confirm that I have both components Angular Aria and then Angular Aria.js, Angular Aria.js. So that's right. And then Angular Animate, Angular Animate.js. So Angular Animate, Angular Animate.js. And so, and same thing with Material. So, so that looks, seems to check out. And so one of the things I can do is go here to my application and I'm going to go to tools since I'm using Chrome. I'm going to use developer tools. I'm going to network and now I'm going to refresh my application and I should see that I am downloading material CSS and all this is 200. Okay. So that means that that was downloaded successfully. So all those things were found. So no problem there. I'm going to go to console though. And the next thing we need to do is after we done download all of this, we have to see on our Angular module, when we create our module, we have to include ng material. We have to say we depend on ng material. So let's go back and do that in our application. So here's our Angular module. And it says right now we depend on ng resource ng route and so we can add ng material and we're going to let that save and our app should reload by itself and so here's the problem once we put that in we can see that though we're having this problem here it's saying you know blah 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 now the reason that is the case is because of what we saw back here um, we chose one and basically ng material and all that stuff um, they are incompatible with that 1.5 one and so one way i found to resolve this is to either use the cdn like this where you load it from from the web or if you're going to install it now the drawback to this you don't want to do professional develop, production development where you load stuff from the web so in terms of testing, it's okay to just use this instead, instead of installing it, and it works just fine. Um, the other thing you can do is just install and use four, but then at that point, you might run into some other problem with ng full stack, but only because, um, uh, only because um, they've tested it with one five. So you can try, the easiest thing is to just use um, the CDN, but let's try it with one, let's try it with Angular 1.6 and Animate 1.6.2. So yeah, ang and Angular 1.6.2 and Animate 1.6.2, and let's see if that works. So let's go back to our Bower, um, Bower.json, and we're going to say Angular 1.6.2, and um, let's see, um, so specifically 162 now approximately, and then Angular Mox, okay, 162. Okay, you know what? We could do 16x, and then that should get the latest. And oh, so all these guys need to change. Uh, all right. All right, and material. We'll leave material at one, whatever it is. Okay, so let's see if that works now. And so we're gonna do Bower update. And let's see, it should go download like the latest Angular and stuff that we want. And let's see if it's reload. And notice it reload and we do not have a problem now. So I did not change the code in any way, all I did was change the dependencies and it's just because they're incompatible. 
So now let's, we want to see if this is actually working. Like, do we really have Angular material installed? So easiest thing to do is to go to our template. So we can close this now. Bower. We can go to a template to do template. There we go. And let's just try and use it. So I'll close these because we don't need those anymore. And how do we know what we have to do? So if we go to material and tell you, you know, getting started, layouts and stuff, how, to, how you lay out stuff. And notice how it's different from uh, Bootstrap. Here you can say layout row and layout column. And then you just use some div in between. And it tells you how to flex and all these other things. So, um, you know, we can go and just grab this. And I'm going to grab this first one. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to go to the template. And I'm going to push this down. I'm going to paste it in there. And so if this is working, if layout row is working, I should see two even columns. Okay. And so let's go here. And here we can see first row. And then bam, there's the second row over there. So that is working. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I can do is I can say, well, um, you know, let's just put my form in one of these columns. Well, let's just don't go too fast. Let's just do this. Let's go back and material layout and let's look at the directors, right? The directors are going to be our inputs, our buttons and so on. So the one we're looking for is we want to do an input, for example. And so we can see here's an example of a form. So we certainly want to do a form. So let's do that. Let's say we wanted to do a form in that first column. So there we go and I'll reformat and let's see what it looks like first of all and so after it's updates ah there's what the form look like uh, I know this is working because I get that animation that um, you know ang material um, angular material gives me now we don't want those sort of inputs we want this particular input here right so um, let me copy this and then put it up here. So that's the input I want, right? My input says type and to do that to do message. Uh, it has a placeholder. Um, you know, it's required. We can say this is required too. To make a to do, you need a required. Should have some um, thing, but that's fine. I can take out this one. All right? Uh, what is it complaining about here? Uh, I don't know what that was just now. Okay, it didn't format properly or something. Um, it's not our favorite color. This is our to-do message, I guess, or to-do topic, whatever you want, is our subject, or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, um, if, it's, if there's something required, you know, we can certainly show up error message. Um, the name for our input, if you want to be able to use that message, is we give the name and we call it message, for example, and then we can call this message. And then the form is not a color form, but rather is a to-do form. And we could name to-do form. Oh, let's call it like that. Camel case. All right. And so... What else? Let's see how is that shaping up. Okay, it's all the way in the corner there. Maybe um, what we want to do is put this um, CSS on our form. So let's see how that looks. And let me reform it again. And so let's see if it's save and update. Huh, okay. Um, not looking too bad. Still coming around. Um, Place in the form up there. All right. Stick, let's see. See what happened. Oh, okay. All right. Um, where is that class? Oh, there's a class here that does some editing on this. Maybe we can stick this on there. And let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It centers it. So, all right. So finally, we, our two forms are kind of looking the same now we're replacing it slowly and we have this um, button so 
maybe we need this div of this list. So let's put that here. Um, we don't want to do a um, a second. Um, so this is flex, but um, we don't want to do a second. Uh, put this in a row. Um, list our stuff side by side. Um, so you know, you list the task on the side. But uh, who knows? Maybe we might want to do that. In this case, uh, we have a button here. Um, so let's put this up here in our form, and then I think we can. We have our submit here, which is going to be. Um, we can take that out and put it in the form if we like, or we can certainly put it on the button. So as the ng click. So copy, um, we'll put this up front and I'll say ng click and you know, let's take this here away, we don't need this anymore. <clears throat> Alright, and so that's a list of tasks and let's see if we can be able to save something else. Look at that. So oh, switch into ng full stack is already working. So um, ng full stack to angular material is already working and we could see see that here. So that was pretty easy and so you go through and do the similar things for all the templates you're going to create. You just need to go look at the angular material documentation at whatever type of inputs you want and just use it, you know, explore. Um, there are buttons and all these other things um, so you can definitely go crazy. And so that's all there is to switching from Bootstrap to Angular Material. And you can roll out your application in either one of those UIs, depending on which one you like. All right. Thanks for your time. And see you in the next and final video. Take care. Bye.